Okay, so just doing a quick little video here. Uh, we're going to do some work this winter on the infield and just a few things. I've got some parts here. I've got a, uh, a heat sink for the exhaust that I'm going to be putting on. I actually picked this up uh, pretty well free from uh, another purchase for a bunch of filters. I bought uh, a dozen filters and they included this little aluminum heat sink. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll put it on while I get it apart. Uh, I'm going to change over the uh, drive sprocket from the standard 17 tooth to this 18 tooth. Just trying to uh, drop the revs a little bit at uh, above uh, 90 or 100 kilometers an hour. I've got a new uh, O-ring seal for the primary chain case. Uh, the old one's been on and off several times, so it's time for a new one. I'll keep the old one for as a spare. And I got the uh, rubber for the uh, air box to uh, carburetor inlet. The old one uh, that came with the bike disintegrated years ago, and I, I made one up out of an old inner tube, but they had this one on uh, sale uh, from India, but it's good, it's pliable, uh, it was cheap, so, you know, a couple of bucks, including shipping, and I couldn't say no. Got some new clutch plates, but I'm not sure I'm going to change out the clutch or not. Uh, it still works, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to oil these up, and I'm just going to keep them as spares, you know, if the clutch finally does wear out. What I'm finding with these old uh, bullets is that parts are becoming harder and harder to get. They used to be very easy to get, and there used to be lots of stuff out of India, and now uh, it's the bullets that were made after 2002 that you're starting to find mostly online. And the older classic bikes, uh, uh, the, you're just not finding them as much anymore. So what I did was uh, just did up a quick list of stuff that I'm going to do and stuff that I found after last winter's work. Uh, the drive sprocket, going to change that out. I noticed that I had a little bit of a shake in the front wheel. So when I did the tire and the tube last year and I changed out the brake shoes and that, I didn't balance the wheel. So I think I got a slight imbalance. So I'm going to take the wheel off and check out the balance. While I got it off, I'm going to put a uh, spacer in. I put a temporary one on, but I'm going to make up a nicer one and put it in. And it's the spacer for the uh, uh, the brake, uh, where the brakes go on between the brake and the left-hand uh, fork. Uh, there's a spacer that allows that nut to back out on mine. And then, of course, your uh, plate kind of wobbles around, and that's not good. It doesn't stay centered, and so I'm going to do that up. The O-ring I've already covered. And I noticed that I got a little bit of a rattly noise from the uh, silencer. So I'm going to check and see if I got some loose baffles. I'll take the silencer off since I end up having to take off the exhaust anyway. Uh, the heat sink that I've already mentioned. i got to take the carb off and clean it as well as the air filter. I haven't had the carburetor off uh, since the 1990s, the late 90s. So it's time. I've noticed that it, uh, it's, it's not really responding well, so I think it's just even though I usually run it, keep it drained uh, in between runs, uh, it's uh, gotten some dirt or some varnish in it, so it's time for a clean. Uh, I'm on the fence. I might just block off that vent from the catch can and vent it out to uh, the ground. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the air filter and see if there's all kinds of oil and spray and crap that comes over from the vent from the catch can. And if there is, then I'm just going to block that off. I don't need that going into my uh, air filter, and I, I don't give a shit if it goes onto the ground. Uh, the air box uh, rubber that I already talked about, and I've got a sticking front brake switch, so i got to get after that, uh, take that apart and uh, lube that up. I've got some electrical contact cleaner, and I'll just clean that up. That's usually what the problem is with those. I've got a small drip on the bottom of the outer gearbox cover, so if you recall, I... Uh, put in new uh, sealed bearings in the gearbox last winter and uh, I've been running uh, uh, I think it's 90 weight gear oil since works great and it's not losing oil it's it shifts really nice and everything's working good but I end up with this small small little leak so I gotta chase that down I'm kinda thinking it might be the drain plug but uh, it's kinda hard to tell because you go for a ride and there's just a little bit of a streak under on the bottom so is it coming from that or somewhere else so I'll take off the outer gearbox cover and have a look. Uh, and I'm going to make up, I think, uh, anyway, with the gearbox plugs as well as the plugs for the primary cover, I'm going to make up some new uh, rubber washers because I find those fiber washers are, are leaking. The uh, automatic transmission fluid comes out of those, uh, out of those plugs there on the uh, primary. 
And then I'm just going to check the gap on the points. Uh, I, I put a new plug in uh, about two, two months ago, but I forgot to gap the points. So I'm just going to give them a quick gap. So uh, the big job that I got here this year is uh, I'm going to be taking off the uh, cylinder. Take, a, take off the head, take off the cylinder. Uh, I want to uh, clean up the rust that's on the outside of the cylinder. I want to repaint it. And I want to clean up the head and just check the uh, seats. And you know, if I have to lap them in, I'll lap in the valves again. Uh, the big thing I want to look at is that piston. So this bike has, well, it reads, I think it's, uh, what is it? 15,000? Yeah, 15,000 kilometers. But the Speedo never works since day one. So uh, it's always read high. So it's probably a little closer to 12 or 13,000 kilometers. I've heard lots about uh, the pistons having a problem with them separating, the skirts separating at the bottom. The, uh, and this is the original uh, installed in the factory piston. So what I think I'm gonna do is take it out. I'm gonna measure and just make sure that it uh, doesn't need to go up a size. And then I'm gonna order a new forged piston from uh, Hitchcock's in England. Uh, years ago, I put on one of these bike speedometers and this is what I use for a speedometer. This is dead accurate because you just measure the uh, circumference of your uh, front tire and you put in the, the reading into that uh, bicycle uh, speedometer and, and you get an exact reading of your speed so it's dead accurate. And you can see down here, I just have the, the sensor. I just put a bracket into where the uh, 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 mudguard stay goes at an angle and then the sensor, I just wired it onto the uh, uh, speedometer cable. And here's the uh, here's the little magnet, the little works by Hall effect. Eh? It just goes by that, and every time it goes by that, it, it reads reads it. But anyway, yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing this year. And I just thought I'd do this little video just as a bit of an introduction. And then uh, the next one will be uh, me getting into uh, tearing this apart and having a look and seeing what kind of shape the inside of the engines in. All right then.